Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hard for Games channel. We are your hosts, I'm Tony. And I'm John. John, what do we have today? We have an early development Wiimote, Nunchuck, and like the light sensor bar for a GameCube? Yeah, so it's a, it's a prototype Wii controller. One of these, I don't know if it's the same one, made a splash in the media a couple months back, but we're gonna be showcasing it today and going as in-depth as possible. So big thank Real you. Deep. Oh yeah. Big thank you to MyRetroPop.com. A little bit more on them at the end of the video, but uh, MyRetroPop.com lent us the controllers. So let's go ahead and get started. This is Hard for Games. They're hard for games. They become hard. They're hard for games. So this is the prototype Wiimote with its weird, gigantic, very, very long cable. But you can see that it's got these very nice, like, very nice clicky feeling buttons. I actually really like how these feel. And they kind of felt familiar. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute. I know exactly where I felt that before. It's the exact same buttons. In fact, these three here are the same as the start and select on the SP. Good job using already great components on this, which I think is half the reason I actually like this one a little bit more than the Wiimote. I also notice that, like, it has sort of like this bulbous section here, and I kind of like how that fits, and you can kind of, like, get your finger there, and it, it just feels more secure in your hand. It doesn't feel like this is going to rock it out of your hand and break your TV that you just bought. But uh, you can see they've got the A and they've got the B back there. And you can see they were like, oh, we'll just reuse these buttons. Uh-oh, B, A, uh, ooh, uh, uh, oh, lowercase B, lowercase A, whew, uh, okay, dodged a bullet there. But let's take a look at this nunchuck. It's quite a bit slimmer, it's got a few differences here and there. The C button is not the tiny little thing. I actually like it as this bigger piece. Uh, the Z button pretty much is the exact same. There's a slight differences in its appearance and feel, but that GameCube texture on there, I actually kind of like. But uh, the weird part is it's got this really short cable and it uses like an ethernet cable to connect, which you would just plug in. Um, that way. Yeah, there we are. Weird. Versus the production, which, you know, used the Wii connector we all know so well now. And you can see they swapped for pretty similar buttons, but a little bit smaller. There's a little bit more play. There's still pretty good click on these, but I always felt the rest felt a little bit more mushy. And you can see that, you know, these are just bigger. It's lost that sort of like lip there. This has got a little bit more heft. It's a little wider. It's got that rubberized feel on there with just one ring now. You've got that nice long cable on there, but you can see what I mean by this one was quite a bit smaller. Just way, way tinier. Maybe it's just because I have tiny hands that I like this one more, but I don't know. What's your opinion? It, that's the way YouTubers beg for comments to try and drive up their numbers. Maybe you could post in the comments, maybe right now, and then refresh 15 times. Also the lack of battery too in that one. Yeah, there is no battery in this one, but that's just because it would be getting power from the GameCube. It's kind of interesting to see, you know, sort of these clickier buttons on here, because I actually really like the clickiness of the buttons on the Joy-Cons. So, I almost kind of feel this is a little closer in feel to some of these. And maybe that's just why I like the Joy-Con so much. You know, despite it's like drift and the stupid impingement devices that wear out pretty quick. The insane price tag. <laughs> the insane price tag, the sometimes you walk five feet away from your system and they deep pair. You know, they've got their foibles, but you know, I like them. So you can see this sensor bar is 
quite a bit longer. Only a couple inches, but it's pretty noticeable in person. And it's got these two bulbous parts for where the LEDs are actually housed. And instead of the tiny little plug in the back of the Wii, this uses this like, it's almost kind of like the um, GameCube microphone plug that went into the memory card. And that just delivers power to the LEDs so that these can show the Wiimote where it's located. So when these first made the big splash in the news, the gaming news a couple months back, I was like, come on, show us some gameplay footage, show us some gameplay footage. I'm sure that all of you at home are probably saying the same thing, but the problem is we can't. There are only a couple of known things that can function with this. Uh, one is a leaked version of Metroid Prime 3, but in order to play it on like actual hardware, you need to play it on development hardware. But you can't just play it on normal development hardware because you actually have to upgrade the RAM manually of your development hardware, which already has upgraded RAM compared to the retail GameCube. Yeah. So it's a lot of work. And in the end, what you get is a Wiimote. You have to also keep in mind with the Metroid Prime 3 beta, you'd also have to get that beta on an NPDP cartridge. So you'd have to write it to an NPDP cartridge, plug it into your dev unit, and then also manually upgrade your RAM <laughs> to be able to play a game with original hardware that could recognize these. If it was already pre-set up, I would definitely play it, but like the steps you have to take are insane. Um, aside from that, Shane is working with a developer uh, on some demos that had been created at a contemporary time to these prototypes. Yeah. And these demos were meant to teach developers how to utilize the Wiimote, sort of pushing, pulling objects, moving things in space, that kind of thing. Yeah. Not currently functional, but they are working on trying to get them functional again. So there are cool there, there is another option aside from Metroid Prime 3, where people could potentially utilize these prototypes. Uh, still, there's some hoops and some time that we have to go through in order to be able to play them, but at least there's an option, I guess. So let's talk about our thoughts, and while we do that, we're gonna showcase some of the internals that Shane sent over to us. He took some really nice photos, better than we could take, and also uh, he's much more willing to take these apart than we would be. I, I take apart and clean controllers all day for work and I don't even want to touch these. Like I take apart Wiimotes and all kinds of stuff all the time. Uh, it's very rare that I ever break one of them, but um, this one's like potential museum piece, so... We're not effing with it, is, I guess is, the, is yeah. the moral of the story. But what did you think about the feel of it overall? I felt it just fit really well in my hands, although I have tiny little hands. And giant fucking thumbs. Yeah, huge thumbs. Huge, just monstrous abomination thumbs. Yeah, uh, I'm like an anteater. That's right. So big thank you to MyRetroPop.com for sending this over to us. MyRetroPop.com is an eBay store that focuses on retro gaming goodness, including prototypes and dev stuff just like this. So if you are interested in that, we're gonna go ahead and put a link in the description below. And also again, big thank you to Shane Batty for sending us just a ton of information regarding these controllers so we could give you proper information and a fleshed out episode. Thank you for compiling all that info for us. It's such a pain digging this stuff up ourselves. And Tony is very short on time these days as uh, there's about to be a new GameCube in his family. Mm-hmm. Imagine giving birth to a cube. And That's what's gonna happen to my wife in a couple weeks. And I can be the first to confirm on video that Hard Baby 2.0's legal name will be Puglonius Monk Vicentainer. It's true. Thank you all for watching. Puglonius Monk loves the fact that you've joined us and subscribed and joined us on Patreon and all that stuff that YouTube makes us say. We love you all, except for you. And we'll see you next time. Ring that bell. Ring that bell. They're hardcore games. It's a hot